At any given time, every person has a range of options before them. Right now, I could get up from my desk and go pet my cat, or go buy ice cream, or run a marathon, or pack up my belongings and move to a new city, or brandish a weapon and murder my neighbor. And that's only a small selection of the range of options before me. However, all of my options are not co-equal. My neighbor may stop me if I try to kill him. My own conscience would probably stop me before that, and at any rate, a consideration of the consequences from my society's justice system might stop me from carrying it out anyway. And I'm being a bit dishonest when I say I could go run a marathon. I'm in no shape to do that. I lack the ability. Although, in theory, I might be free to do innumerable things, I actually lack the ability to do most of the things that come to my mind. Superman has the ability to fly, but I do not. And while I could one day run a marathon if I followed the option to get into better shape, some people have disabilities that would prevent them from running or even walking a marathon. While some options are eliminated, some of them are simply diminished so much that they are effectively eliminated from my range of options. As much as it might seem like an available option to me to move to a new city, the truth is that I would need to find a new job, a new home, and a new circle of support if I'm moving away from family and friends. With all of these considerations, this option is so diminished that I really ought to pay more attention to the other options before me. One could argue that I still have this option open, but practically speaking, it's essentially closed to me. When dealing with socio-political matters, power is defined as the capacity to influence the actions, beliefs, or conduct of others. In short, power is a measure of how much one can affect the range of options available to other people. If I am a hiring manager for a wealthy corporation, I have this power. I can grant a job to someone, thereby increasing their income and influence, and thereby expanding their available range of choices. They didn't have enough money to afford a down payment for a house, but thanks to my power, they now have that option available to them, as well as high-end food and a yacht. If I have a similar power to fire someone, the exercise of this power will mostly limit their options. Whereas before, they had the option in front of them to come into work each day, now they're not allowed in the building. What's more, their loss of income forces them to face the fact that they need to cut down on some spending habits. Power can be measured in a few ways. Can you eliminate and create, or can you only diminish and expand distinct options for people? How many people can you affect with your power at once? With how many people do you share the execution of your power? For example, a police officer who tackles and handcuffs someone instantly eliminates that person's ability to move, and therefore eliminates almost all of their effective options. This direct power works on only one person, but it does eliminate a whole host of other options, not just diminishes them. A congressman could pass a bill legalizing the use of a recreational drug. This power works on a huge number of people, measured in the millions. This expands their options, but many people already took this option. It just makes it easier for them to no longer worry about the legal ramifications of their actions. This power is hindered because one congressman cannot do this alone. They are dependent on the cooperation of the legislative body of which they are only one member. The President of the United States has the power to pardon criminals. Although this power can only affect one person at a time, it may be wielded alone, not in cooperation with others. And, since it often frees people from prison time, it opens a whole host of distinct options that were previously eliminated. There are a lot of tools of power. You can use charisma to persuade people to consider those options you want to guide them towards, or violence to forcibly restrict their range of options. If you have access to information and know how to present it, you can affect someone's informed choices. If you have a lot of wealth, your own abilities are greatly expanded, and sharing that wealth can be a means of influencing the decisions of others. Power is a crucial topic in politics, particularly those powers given to steer society and nations through laws, education, information, misinformation, trends, etc. How much power should be given exclusively to specific people? How much power should we afford to our state institutions of government? Is the concept of freedom best defined as the unchecked ability to gain power over others, or is it the ability to live safely apart from the power of others?